And hello, it's Tim Ostendorf back again. Um, I hope I remembered how to work this because it's been so long since I've done this. So Tim Ostendorf, baritone and innkeeper, innkeeper at the Inner Crystal Lake in Eaton, New Hampshire. And usually, uh, well, I used I started these doing all things Joan Sutherland, and um, I've done other of my favorite divas like Adita Gabrova. I've done a little Marilyn Horn. Uh, I've done Phyllis Curtin done quite a few other divas other than Sutherland, um, but I started these a few years ago, and uh, this year it is, well, right now it's uh, December of 2015, and I've been doing these for a couple years, and I have fans all over the globe um, that love my pretentious accent, of which I don't have one, I don't even know what this is, and um, anyway, it's been a long time since I've done one, and I always say that, and blah, blah, blah. So welcome back, Tim. Hi, Tim. Um, but I had uh, some close family deaths in my life this year, and so things have been a little crazy. But here I am back, it's the holidays, and guess what? No Joan Sutherland tonight either. Um, although I love her dearly, and actually, you, I know I've, I've shown off my, my title at twos here before. Here's a Joan Sutherland with the signature, and then my latest one was a Richard Bonning one right here. Um, I have a, a Gruber Over one over here, and I think the next one that I will do, because I had a chance to love this, to, to love this, to meet this lovely soprano, is that like a little Freudian slip? Because I do love me's, me, my Leontine Price, and I do not think I've done any Leontine Price since I started these videos. And one of the reasons that I am choosing Leontine Price this evening, a couple of different reasons. Um, a few weeks ago, we had one of my opera dinners that we do at the Inner Crystal Lake, another shameless ad again. And I had an old friend, William Joseph Cotton, or better known as Billy Cotton, come up. He, he's a teacher at the Boston Conservatory of Music, better known as Boko. And he, this is his favorite soprano. And so uh, this is his Joan Sutherland. And so he came up and did um, one of my opera dinners. Now, usually the opera dinner is a little bit lecture, a little bit performance, usually from me and a pianist. But instead, Billy did um, a lecture just on Leontine and her life, and it was wonderful and amazing and all of that. And um, what was wonderful is that although I've known Billy a long time, we reconnected through Facebook and the Wibbernets and all that. And we knew each other years ago in Boston. And um, let's see, uh, I was a, a student at BU and I had gone to Tanglewood. And anyway, what I found out just a few weeks ago, although I knew we were at a lot of the same concerts, I found out that the first time he heard her perform live was the first time I heard her perform live. Mm, kismet. Um, and so, and that was the summer of 1986 at Tanglewood. She wore green. And so uh, at the end of the concert, uh, supposedly we little students were supposed to be taken backstage and get, in a, pho get a photograph with her and she was going to sign something. Um, and I guess they did let all the fellows do that. And Billy was a fellow that year. He was, he's a couple years older than I am. I don't mean that as a diss. He's a lovely man. Um, but, uh, um, and so they took all the high school students, and by then it was raining out. It was a cold August, was it July? Anyway, and so there's a little backstage kind of balcony-ish thing. And so she came out probably in a turban, of course, uh, to greet all her young fans. I was a mere 17 years old at the time. And um, and they and then instead they handed out these pictures um, that are already signed. So she did not sign that to me. And so anyway, getting back to my tattoos, uh, most of them have to be things that like they did specifically, like this came from a letter from Bonning. This was specifically Sutherland signed to me. This was um, something that my friend Akira Nakamura had uh, gotten in Japan, um, a CD signed. So even though it doesn't have my name, it was signed specifically for me. Anyway, and so this, even though it was wasn't signed for me and probably was signed ahead of time, um, you know, like those Joan Crawford signatures you see in Mommy Dearest, right? Um, and then they handed them out, but still it's very special to me. And I'd forgotten, I did never forgot, what do I mean I'd forgotten? I remembered it very vividly and, um, and, and, and maybe did forget a little bit what, uh, what a favorite of, of hers. I also saw her at, uh, Symphony Hall a few years after that, and, and she is still alive and, um, not singing anymore, but you can get clips of her still singing into her 80s. Um, and so that, that will be my next tattoo. Sincerely, Leontine Price. And so, what, since it is December and it's the holidays, I have a couple cuts from her, um, Christmas CD with Von Karian. Wonderful, wonderful CD from, um, um, from, from a year that I, 
Well, oh. oh. So let's hope I remember how to cut and splice because I was doing something. I was getting the CD and I couldn't read the date and then suddenly the screen changed and then what I was doing was getting these because, yes, it's official. I don't now need readers. But I'm very proud to say that I only need plus ones, which are kind of difficult to find. It makes me very unique, right? Because you can get one, two, fives and up all over the place. But 100s, I have to order them online usually. Or sometimes I get the cheapy ones at Walmarts, right? Okay, anyway, so this was done in 1961 in uh, recorded in Vienna with von Karajan as the conductor in the Vienna Grosjeus Rotor Kitchen Choir and the, uh, the, uh, the Vienna Philharmonic. Um, and so, anyway, <clears throat> are we going to play a couple songs from here? And uh, they're the second two cuts because um, there's a little chorus singing along and she does some wonderful uh, little kind of descanty things um, that are a lot of fun. And so here we go for the first one. <clears throat> Hark! Hark, hark. And the uh, orchestra, the, um, uh, actually, no, it's the third and fourth cuts, I think, yeah. Because, oh, because we are the three kings of the Orient. Actually, listen to the orchestra at the beginning. It's very cool. All right. Ooh, Oriental music. Is that considered racist? I don't think so. setting actually. vowels I love that and it just suits her those cheekbones and um, I just love that sound of hers and I I got goosebumps here I don't know if you do out there in the webernets and the interworlds and the YouTubes is is but I do This is such a beautiful setting that, you know, when you sing it at church on Christmas Eve, you're like, oh my God, are they going to do all the verses? There's like a hundred. Okay, I think there's only four, but whatever. Um, and um, it's just like, come on, all right already. And I remember, well, not I remember, I still do the Christmas Eve service at the Little White Church, which is right across the street from our inn in Eaton, New Hampshire. And um, they made me do the kid thing, the little, whatever they march up and down, what do you call it? The pageant. Yeah, that's it. Finally, I gave that up because I was like, if you got kids, you can do the pageant. I'll do the rest. And I have a good friend of mine, Mary Eads, who comes. She's a wonderful Unitarian minister, and she does all of that. And I usually sing something at the beginning, Lo, How It Arose, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, so one year when I had to direct the children, and this came up, I was like, well, we have to do all the verses. Because the first one just talks about the three kings, and then each one has verse. So we have to do the whole song, because it wouldn't make sense if we only did, like, the first two verses, because then what's about the rest of them? And these poor kids were like, really? And I made them, like, march up when the first king came, and then, the, you know, usually they just march around, and nobody really cares. But and then I made the second one come up, and then the third one come up my my directorial debut and uh, it was scrapped the next year right by the wayside they didn't care they just want the cute kids whatever
really the ending. That's the main reason we listen to this, right? It's coming up. It's really the, not the only reason, but one of the reasons. And did you catch the tea? Just, just at the end. Just gives me. I'm, I look, I got boost, goops of look at like you can see them out there. Um, anyway, and so also another wonderful. Um, there's a DVD of uh, Lean Team Press, uh, Chant Noël. Uh, it's in uh, Montreal uh, with uh, Chasse du Toit, uh, and it's at that great big church uh, right there in the old uh, old town or whatever they call it. It's big and beautiful and like these amazing lights and uh, it's behind the thing and then the backside had burned down years ago and they rebuilt that. And anyway, it's really cool. It's in Montreal. Um, and anyway, so next cut. Um, and, uh, well, you know, we'll, we'll just play it, because you all, all know it. Isn't that nice? Just acapella with the chorus. I'd forgotten that that whole uh, that whole number is a cappella, no orchestra in there, um, which is kind of cool. So anyway, um, a little little touch of Christmas from lovely Miss Price um, and um, from Laura, Mississippi. Um, and so uh, there you go. Uh, Merry Christmas, everyone, and happy whatever and whatever else it is you do out there. Um, and um, I may do a little more uh, in a day or two. I'm not sure. Um, it's been very, very busy at the Inner Crystal Lake. Um, we've got what we call a cookie tour coming up. Um, we just had a concert the other night at the Little White Church, a different concert, uh, about the uh, with Carol Noonan, who's a local folk singer, and Dana Cunningham, who's a local pianist. And we had lots of people for dinner. And so we've got about 1,800 cookies to bake for this cookie tour that I just mentioned coming up Woo! and so if i have time i might do a little more leontine price because i recently got my favorite opera right cosi fan tutte right we all know that well maybe you don't but now you do and so um i, I have a recording of uh of leontine price now which i never had that recording with her and tatiana trionis i believe i can't even i didn't even say that correctly but you know who i mean um and uh who's the uh line store i think is their conductor anyway i haven't even listened to it all the way through um so maybe i'll do a little cut of that maybe a little comescorio that would be fun like a rock um, and until next time, Tim Ostendorf signing off for now.